Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. I am Promo as usual. Today we're quite excited because we're going to finally finish the discussion on the thyroid gland. This is part 4 of the thyroid gland videos. If you missed part 1, part 2 or even part 3 of the, of the series, click on the links below and it'll take you back to the appropriate video. So today what are we going to do? We're going to talk about thyroid cancers. The thyroid cancers are listed on this side of the board over here. However, first we want to go through a workup. A workup meaning, well, what happens now on a physical exam? You, uh, you're examining the patient and you feel a thyroid nodule. A nodule is a lump in your thyroid gland. So you want to go through a series of step-by-step -step approach, make sure the nodule is non-cancerous, and in case it is cancerous, what's the next procedure? So first things first, you get a TSH level and a free T3 and a free T4. The patient ends up being hyperthyroid. So what does that mean? T3, T4 is uh, quite elevated, TSH is suppressed. You do a radioactive iodine uptake scan. Either you're gonna get a hot nodule, which is hyperfunctioning, or a cold nodule, which means it's not hyperfunctioning. So if it's a hot nodule, you treat the patient just like you would treat for hyperthyroidism, meaning you treat the patient with PTU, propylthyroidine, or you can use methamazole. If it's a cold nodule, you do an FNA. What does FNA stand for? fine needle aspiration. So this is the time when you actually do a biopsy of the thyroid gland. You want to make sure that this uh, nodule is non-cancerous, okay? If the patient is hypothyroid, that means the T3, T4 is going to be uh, low this time, the TSH may be normal or even elevated, you go straight uh, into treatment. What kind of treatment? Again, you treat the patient like you're tra treating a hypothyroid patient, you give the patient levothyroxine. Now, if the nodule does not disappear, the next step is FNA, fine needle aspiration, okay? If the patient ends up being euthyroid, that means a normal TSH, normal T3, normal T4. Well, guess what? You should still have a high suspicion for cancer and you do a FNA, fine needle aspiration. Now, well, what happens when you do a fine needle aspiration? It's going to tell you a couple different things. You're uh, assessing the cells. It's going to tell you it's a benign condition. If it's benign, no big deal. Observe the patient. You may want to repeat an FNA in the future. However, if it's not benign, it could be cancers, which we say malignancy. So now we talk about the cancer situations. We've got a many different thyroid cancers over here. The treatment for all your cancers are going to be a surgery, lobectomy. So you want to actually remove the nodule. You want to remove the part of the lobe of the thyroid gland, which is uh, cancerous. So let's talk about the first cancer over here, papillary carcinoma. Papillary carcinoma is the most popular carcinoma from all of the ones listed over here. How are you going to remember that? Think of the letter P in papillary and think about most popular. It has really good prognosis, so that's a good thing. Best prognosis from all the cancers. So if you want to wish for any of the cancers, which obviously none of you guys want to, you want to wish that you get papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. On histology, you're going to see these things called orphan anti-nuclei. And another important thing, you're going to see posoma bodies. Now over here, I've underlined over here the P and the S and the M and M in posoma bodies. Other conditions that also have posoma bodies, you can remember from this mnemonic over here. So of course the P stands for papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. The S stands for the serous adenocarcinoma of the ovary. The first M stands for mesothelioma and the second M stands for meningiomas. Good. Now in the history of the question stem, it's going to describe an adult uh, at some point when they were a child, they were exposed to some irradiation. So increased risk with childhood irradiation. Also, if the patient has any of these mutations, the RET mutation or the BRAF mutation, high chances are that you're dealing with the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. Awesome guys. The next thing we want to talk about is follicular carcinoma right over here. This one also has good prognosis, not as great as the papillary carcinoma, but still better than the rest of them. This one invades the thyroid capsule and the vasculature. On histology, it's going to be uniform follicles. So think about the F in follicles, and you want to remember the F in follicular carcinoma. It has hematogenous spread, and it's associated with a RAS mutation. So again, we're describing these mutations for a reason, right? The follicular carcinoma, RAS mutation. Papillary carcinoma, RET mutation, and BRAF mutation. Awesome, guys. The next one is medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. This one is derived from the parafollicular C cells. These C cells are going to make calcitonin. So high levels of calcitonin will be seen. On histology, you got sheets of cells in amyloid stroma. And on stain, it's going to stain Congo red. So don't forget that Congo red stain is staining the amyloid. The medullary carcinoma of the thyroid is associated with MEN2A as well as MEN2B. We're going to talk about these MEN syndromes, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes at the end of the endocrine series. But just to give you guys a heads up, MEN2A includes your uh, medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, it includes your pheochromocytoma, and it includes your parathyroid hyperplasias. 
MEN2B, on the other hand, again, includes your pheochromocytoma, medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. This time it includes marfanoid habitus, as well as the mucosal neuromas, okay? These ones over here associate with the RET mutation, so do not forget that. The MEN2A and the MEN2B associate with RET mutations. On over here, we got the undifferentiated anaplastic carcinomas. Definitely remember that these patients will be of a uh, very old age. Uh, it invades local structures and has very, very poor prognosis. And lastly, we finally discussed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has a B cell origin. And if you guys remember from a couple of videos ago when we talked about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, we said we had an increased risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So definitely remember that connection. So that's it, guys. That's it. We finally finished our discussion on the thyroid hormone as well as the thyroid gland. We talked about hypofunctioning, hyperfunctioning, and today we finally concluded with thyroid cancers. Next week, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about the parathyroid hormone. In the meantime, you know, you guys definitely got to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and definitely get on your laptops and uh, write me a nice comment or two. Again, in case you missed the, the video from last week, what's going to happen? Magically, the video is going to pop up in uh, just a couple of seconds. So make sure you click on that video. So until then, have a great week, and we will see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.